Hi, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. Today, we're going to get into indicators that are available on Sharp Charts. We're going to show you how easy it is to add them, how you can customize them with the parameters and colors and opacity, how you can position them on the charts, a couple of unique indicators called price and up-down pair, and we'll show you how to add an indicator to an indicator. The indicators section can be found just below the sharp charts underneath the chart attributes section and overlays and you will see indicators. And if you click that drop down, you will see dozens of indicators that you can add with just one click. So I'm going to go ahead and add MACD and the default parameters will automatically fill in in the parameters box. And if you accept those parameters, just click update to add MACD to your sharp chart. Of course, it is easy to change the default parameters. So for MACD, if I want to change the parameters and instead of a 12 day EMA, I want a 50 and instead of a 26, I want a 200. And if I want 20 days for my signal line, I just make those changes and then I can click update. I'm going to go ahead and add another indicator to this sharp chart. I'm going to add the RRG relative strength indicator. And this is going to compare QQQ to another symbol. And if I want to change that symbol, I just type in another symbol in the parameters box. And I'm going to type in SPY. Click update when you are ready and you will see your new chart with the indicator settings just how you like them. Now, some people like to put an indicator above their chart as well, and you can do that by repositioning the indicator windows. So I'm going to go down back to my indicators. And if you don't see this settings box on the right, you have to click the little triangle to open up the advanced options. And you can see these are both positioned below. But if I want to put MACD above, I can position that above. And I'm going to go ahead and add another indicator. I'm going to add RSI. And so if I scroll down, select RSI, and I'm going to position it behind the price. And so it stands out, I'm going to color it red. And when I'm ready with those settings, I'm going to click update and I will get my new sharp chart. So now you can see that I have MACD in the top window. I've got RSI behind the price, which makes it easy to compare changes in RSI to changes in price. And for relative performance, I've got the RRG lines. So I've got a new chart here and I've got all three windows below the price chart, stochastics, volume, and the scooter for QQQ. And if I want to reorder those windows, say I want volume to be above stochastics, I can easily do that as well. You have some reorder arrows in between the position and the color. And so I can click that arrow to move volume up. And if I want the scooter to be above stochastics, I can do that as well. A couple more things. You notice that volume was not colored here and there's no parameters. But if I click this box here to check colored volume, I will now get colored volume. And I'm also going to check the box for Y axis labels so I can see the values on the right hand side. Again, click update when you're ready and you will see your new indicator settings. I've got volume just below the price with the value on the right. I've got the scooter and I can easily see the scooter rating and I've got stochastics on the bottom. I've created a new chart with six indicators. The number of indicators that you can add to a chart does depend on your membership level. Now what I've got here is six indicators and there is no date axis between these indicators. And if I want to add one of those, I can do that really easily by going down to the indicator drop downs and I will choose date and time axis. Now you can see it's at the bottom now, but I want to put it in between these six indicators. So I'm just going to reorder it by moving it up the ladder there. When it's where I would like, I click update and I will see my new chart. And there you can see we have a date axis in the middle. Now moving down to the indicator selections down below, if you just want to start all over, you can of course click the clear all button or if you want to remove an indicator, you can scroll to the top and click none. 
and when you're finished, click Update. This next chart shows QQQ with the average directional index with plus DI and minus DI. And you can see that window is smaller by default than the price window above. But if we want to make that window the same size, we can adjust the height. So if I want it to be half the size of the price window, I can choose 0.5. And if I want it to be the same size to get the maximum detail, I can do that. Click Update and you will now see the average directional index with a window the same size as the price window. This chart here shows QQQ with the MACD histogram put behind the price there. And you can see the scale for the MACD histogram on the left. And you can see that it's kind of overpowering. You can't see the price bars very well. But we can change the opacity of the MACD histogram to make it more transparent so we can see both price and the MACD histogram. And I'm going to go ahead and put it at 0.3 and click Update to see the new chart. So now we can see the MACD histogram and we can also see the price better when it's overlaid on the chart there. Now let's look at how to add an indicator to an indicator. And this is really handy if you want to compare, say, a cross of the 200-day moving average. So I've got QQQ in the top window with the 200-day moving average in red. And you can see it crossed there in February. And in the indicator windows, I've got on balance volume and the accumulation distribution line. But I don't have a 200-day moving average to compare the cross there. But I can add that really easily. If you scroll down to the indicators section, you can see I've already got the advanced options open. And the height of these indicator windows is set at 0.5 to make them a little bit bigger. And say I want to change the color of OBV to make it different from the accumulation distribution line. I'll color that green. And then I can add an overlay to those indicators, which is the indicator of the indicator. And I'm just going to add a simple moving average. Now I would like that to also be red and 200 days. So I'm going to go 200 and colon red. And by colon and adding a color, you can get a customized color on that moving average. And I'll do that the same thing to the accumulation distribution line. And if I click Update, now I can see that OBV crossed after QQQ, but the accumulation distribution line crossed above its 200-day well before QQQ did. So now I want to show you an example with the price indicator, which gives you the option to enter any symbol in that parameters box to chart another symbol. So I could put any symbol here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a ratio chart because I want to know the performance of QQQ relative to SBY. And when I click update, you're going to see that ratio chart now in the indicator window. And there's one more special indicator I would like to show you. It's called price up down pair. And if I select that, then I can plot a histogram of two symbols. And here we've got New York advances, comma, New York declines. And you can put any two related symbols there. Go to the symbol catalog if you need more information. And there you can see I've got advances in green and declines in red. So I can easily see those two indicators. So as you can see, there are dozens of indicators and there are dozens of ways to customize these indicators to get them exactly how you want. It's really easy to make great looking charts that will help your investing and trading decisions. Thanks very much for tuning in. Good luck and good trading.